Hi guys, welcome to the Citizen Channel. I hope you're all staying safe and well. Please, if you are new to this channel, please push that subscribe button. We do everything city past and present here on these little vlogs, so I do try and inform and entertain. And there's some links on screen as well for Facebook and Twitter where I do post loads of city stuff. So if you follow a friend me on there, I do check every few days and follow and friend everyone back. And if you do get a chance, please have a check out my uh, film and TV channel as well, uh, which I try and inform and entertain on there and all the latest films and TV drama here in the UK and from around the world. So you can check that out. That will be fantastic. Anyway, hope you enjoy today's feature. Welcome to this feature, this episode, uh, Dream Debuts, where we have a look at, uh, yeah, debuts for City that sort of uh, were, sort of went better than planned. And obviously this is a slight change, a slight deviation. It's a Dream Home debut because uh, this guy, Mark Lillis, we're going to talk about today, actually made his debut on the 17th of August 1985 on a trip to Highfield Road, Coventry City. But it was a few days later, three or four days later, when he made his what we think was probably his dream debut. Of course, he was a boiled City fan, so what, what more could you ask him to, to play for the first team at Main Road? It actually came many years uh, later than he sort of expected as well. You know, he was actually on City's books well before this date, uh, and, but never got through, uh, never got picked and signed up. So we're going to have a look at that today. We're going to have a look at his, uh, how, he came, how it came to be and the dream debut itself. and what. I mean, it was an interesting one, to say the least. So we're going to look eventually, uh, when we've had a quick look back at his past, at his main road senior debut on the 21st of August 1985. And uh, as I say, not in itself a significant match. It was a 1-1 draw with Leicester City, but uh, certainly an interesting one as far as young Mark Lillis was concerned. I'll still say young because he was still young at that time. Of course he was. Of course, it, it was a dream as a youngster. It would take 11 years to do, to get this debut, uh, until he got his bow at Main Road for the first team. He'd obviously spent time at Main Road on, on as a schoolboy. Back in 1974, he was at school in Disbury. Yeah, I mean, I lived in Withington, but it's Disbury's next door to us. He went to St Mark's in Disbury and was starring for Manchester Boys. So, yeah, he was doing very, very well at all the different ages. I think... Uh, from memory, I, I think there were trials for Manchester boys when I was about 10 years old or something like that. And obviously there was various age, age ranges uh, up to up to about under 14, under under 16 for Manchester boys and all the, all the various other boys, club boys teams, of course. Uh, Mark actually recalled at the time, he said he'd had a trial for Plymouth uh, at the time when City scout Harry Godwin obviously probably had a packet of sweets with him, didn't he? That was his normal thing, wasn't it, Harry Godwin? Came along and offered me a schoolboy contract with City. I couldn't sign it quick enough, said Mark. He said, a City were my team. So there you go, absolutely brilliant. Uh, it stood behind the goal at Wembley in 1969. I think his mother had taken him uh, when City, uh, mum and dad were keen City fans, uh, when City won the FA Cup final, of course, against Leicester City. Uh, and he'd stood on the Kipax with his mates up until his sort of City career uh, started. Of course, there was uh, plenty of blues in Disbury at the time. I did spend a lot of, a lot of time in and around Disbury, uh, mainly West Disbury. A, a good friend of mine, a big City fan, a big City mate, went most of the away games with me and home games, obviously, in the mid, mid to late 70s. Uh, Chris lived in West Disbury, so I did spend a lot of time. There's an East Disbury as well. That's where I went to school, at Parswood High School. So, yeah, there was uh, certainly a lot of blues in Disbury at the time. Yeah, and back to Mark. Let's get back to Mark. He was a, a sort of beefy, a beefy centre half. He became a sort of beefy centre forward, didn't he? Or right winger, or whichever position he played. Uh, he obviously, his, his dad was a, a professional boxer. Yeah, so obviously, I think he took it took his bill from it from his father, who was a, a professional boxer at the time. Uh, so in 1975, 76, he began his City career playing in the B team, which was the normal in those days. But uh, things didn't quite progress as well as he'd hoped it started off okay but he said he's a good start but as his 16th birthday approached so he hadn't been signing signed on the schoolboy forms which was the normal thing most of his 
most of the guys who played in the Manchester boys team were either signing for City or even signing for United on schoolboy form. So it looked uh, with with uh, sort of his dad sat him down and sort of said he might have to look uh, elsewhere for schoolboy forms if he wanted to follow a football career. And uh, you say, ironically, he was one of the only guys in his Manchester boys team who wasn't picked up by either City or United. But an opportunity arose at Burnley. That didn't quite work out. But uh, he found himself being trialled at uh, Huddersfield Town, so across the Pennines there. And at the time, obviously, he obviously had left school. He was working. He'd started work at the Daily Express in Manchester. Uh, I think he was a, a runner or something like that for them. And he would, uh, of course, once uh, Huddersfield took an interest, he would travel uh, to Huddersfield in the mornings, do the training, and then come back in the afternoon and work a shift at, uh, at the Daily Express. Uh, so quite a tiring time, but I think he enjoyed it. Say, he was only a young man. He, was, uh, he only had to do it for about three months because uh, it was a means to an end. And eventually, after three months, he was offered a professional contract at uh, Huddersfield. So he quickly, very quickly, quit his express job, I assume, uh, based on that. I think as most of us would, who would have that opportunity at the time. Uh, whilst he was there at Huddersfield Town, the, the old Terriers, is it, the nickname, he moved from defence, his chun chunky figure from defence to midfield to attack, and uh, he be became better known, obviously, as a tackle when he, when he eventually returned to City. It was a steady start for uh, Mark Lillis at Huddersfield. He made his first team debut in October 1968, and he was sort of, although he played a few games for the first team, he was sort of being in and out of the first team in the reserves. He was only, he's only a young lad. That's quite normal in those days. And he made his, uh, he got his first team goal uh, at Craven Cottage in December 1980. By 1982-83, he was an ever present in the team as they were promoted to Division Two, and he was a top scorer as well with 20 goals. But yeah, he did have a little problem. His luck did, didn't sort of hold out. He picked up a, a bit of a niggling back injury, which is, isn't great for footballers, is it? And this began to affect his overall appearances. And it was event, eventually diagnosed as a displaced vertebrae. And he was hospitalised for an operation in June 1984. So once that season finished, he, he was in hospital to have it done. And he returned to the team. He returned to Huddersfield the following season. But Huddersfield never quite made that step up from the second division to the first while he was there. Uh, and he really did want first division football. And he was, his current contract was running down. It was running to an end. But uh, he had his eyes on, on bigger things. He had his eyes on bigger fish. He wanted to play in the first division. Uh, and, of, of course, uh, as his contract ran out, there were certain teams in the first division who had just been promoted back into the division like ourselves. Uh, Chelsea were interested, Sheffield Wednesday, Birmingham City, Oxford United who were obviously got to the first division as well. All showed an interest in Mark Lillis, but uh, he was also... Obviously, delighted that City, of course, were added to the various suitors. And, of course, despite trying not to let himself get carried away uh, by a return to his boyhood club, it was uh, sort of hard to sort of put that to one side, although he did, did try his best to do so. He now had a, he had a young child. He also had a, another baby on the way. So he had to look after, he had to think about his contracts and financial things, obviously. So... Uh, City weren't offering the most money, but obviously they were offering enough to encourage him to obviously come back across uh, again, back to Manchester uh, from Huddersfield Town. I think City paid the, the princely sum of £132,000 for uh, for his services at the start of the 85-86 season. There you go, there's the three guys lined up. There'll be a picture on there. Uh, I'm not going to tell you the three, who the other two guys are. You, don't have to, you, have, you have to think who those other two guys are anyway, but... Uh, yeah, you should. You should know. Certainly, one of them you should know. The other one might be quite difficult. But uh, there you go. So he did come back to City. One hundred thirty-two thousand pounds. His mum and dad uh, were thrilled, of course. I mean, they were they were season ticket holders at City anyway. His elder brother Alf actually purchased a season ticket just to come and see him uh, for that. Uh, Return in the 85 86 season, managed to get a season ticket uh, near you know, next to his uh, mum and dad as well. 
and his uncle, one of his uncles, was a regular uh, at the football. And, he, and his uh, his little his sister, yeah, his sister had a hairdresser's on Platt Lane, so he had a he had a good head of hair then, didn't she? You know, it's obviously a bit like a bit like us all. We no, we all had a good head of hair at that age in the early twenties, and uh, yeah, he could nip to the hairdressers on Platt Lane. I probably walked past it many times. Could always nip there, nip there for a trim, trim off his sister. So there you go. So finally, Mark, instead of standing on the Kipak set for the first team game, will get his opportunity to play in front of it. As I say, he'd made his uh, debut a little bit earlier against High Highfield Road against Coventry, but he got his chance to play in front of the Kipaks on the twenty first of August, nineteen. So please join me back in part two, uh, where we'll have a look. We'll have a look at this debut. A uh, very interesting debut for this uh, boyhood city fan, Mark Lilly. So please join me for part two. Hope you enjoyed that anyway. Thanks for watching and uh, whatever you're going to do with us today. Have a great one. Look after yourselves. Look after your friends. Look after your families. More important, let's all look after each other. We'll meet here again, hopefully for part two or something else. All I ever ask is please stay safe, Blues. Come on, city. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.